Well, thank you for joining me for another ITY video. I'm here today with Mark Bennett. He's the Vice President of Services in the APJ region for CA Technologies. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Alex. Great to be here. So we're here at uh, CA World 2016. Uh, but before we get on to that, can you please tell us a little bit about your role at the company and a bit of your own history? Yeah, sure. So I, I look after the services and education business for CA Technologies throughout Asia Pacific Japan. So mm -hmm. that's basically everything from India up to Japan, down to New Zealand and back again and everything in the moment. And it's the Asian century, so it's the, the area of the moment that's not going to go away for quite it's, a long time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for any for any multinational company, it is it is the growth area yeah. for that business. And you know, it's got a lot of complexities, it's got huge regional diversity. We'll deal with challenges in, in this region that none of the other geos really have to face. Uh, which makes it a fascinating job. Yeah, yeah, and um, I mean, so many different. Uh, uh, it's not just an, another Western, you know, country that's speaking English. It's yeah. it's really it's incredible. So, how, how long have you been at CA Technologies? Coming up in five years. Yeah. Um, feels like yesterday. <laughs> I uh, I started out here running the Australian New Zealand services business, mm -hmm. and uh, a couple of years ago took over the APJ mantle. Yeah, and you're still based in Sydney. Still based in Sydney. Yeah, but you must travel a, quite a lot around the region. I spent a fair amount of time in those metal tubes. Yeah. Um, it uh, becomes a home away from home in sure. many ways. Anytime I get any reading done and <laughs> actually get any cave time, but uh, yeah, travel's a big part of this stuff. Now uh, we're at the conference as I mentioned, and there's been a lot of new announcements. Uh, but are there any particular key messages of the conference thus far before we get into things like digital transformation, like overarching themes that you'd like people to walk away with, especially if that, this is the only video they're watching, for example? Yeah, look, I, I tell you, for those of us that are in this industry, it's the most exciting place to be. Yeah. I mean, and what I'm starting to see now, what a, what a lot of customers that I'm talking with are starting to see is we've been hearing this message about this next big industrial wave. Mm -hmm. You know, the industry is being revolutionized. It started with Marco Andreessen talking about software's eating the world, and it's actually becoming a reality. I'd say we've probably gone over that tipping point now where so many companies are becoming software companies. So mm -hmm. instead of thinking of themselves as banks or retailers or you know, manufacturers, they're actually starting to recognize that they're technology companies, and it's, it's pervaded every part of their operation, the way they interact with their customers, the way that they think about running their business. And, that's a massive shift from where we were just a couple of years ago. Mm. And the beauty of being up here in North America, you know, a big global trade conference like this is you're starting to get exposed to what customers are doing all around the world. Yeah. That you can then bring back to your customers. You can leverage that. Exactly. And you can actually give, hey, look what's happening here. This is actually something you guys could start thinking about in, in our particular regions. And it's just an amazing time to be in this industry. And of course, all the networking and idea sharing and all the rest is just Absolutely. very powerful. So digital transformation, we touched on it briefly before, but it's the buzzword of the moment, but not just that, it's the digital, it's the reality. Businesses yeah. are really taking it on board. Yeah. But there are so many businesses that must be, you know, that they know they have to do it, but they don't really know exactly what it is or how to do it. And clearly, CA Technologies has been working on this for some time, has a mature tool set, and, and you know, it's, it's something that you're really helping companies to, um, to start the journey. Absolutely. I mean, it reminds me of 10 years ago when we were all talking about the cloud and SaaS and service that, as a yeah yeah that's right. I mean nowadays we have service as a service. You know it's incredible. I know, exactly, <laughs> and everyone knew they had to be in it. Yeah, but no one quite knew what it meant. Well, it was immature at the time, but, it but was. that's now that's now 16 years ago. I started right. hearing about it at the turn of the century. Application yeah. management yeah. services. Yeah. Went that's right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And ASP and all that. But um, you know, it, it's a similar time with digital transformation where a lot of customers and a lot of CIOs and and, and C-suite people are hearing this thing: digital transformation. We need to do digital transformation. Mm. How do we become a relevant business? How do we not be one of those use cases of a company that was dominating its market space and five years later is gone? And how do we use these you know, API things that we hear right, about? Right, and what does it mean? Apps and, yeah, That's right, yeah. and, and you have this big gap between the, the story, and I think you know, CA's done a fantastic job over the last three to four years of starting to frame that concept of the application economy, of digital disruption, of the fact that organizations need to get ahead of the curve if they want to stay relevant, they've got to speed up. Yeah. But then how do you take that and actually make it something real? Yeah. And, and in an IT world where you're, you know, your business is full of engineers and techos and, and you're still dealing with traditional business processes. And siloed environments siloed and all those other buzzwords right. we hear. You know? you're, you're literally dealing with large enterprises, mid-sized companies, government agencies, mm. where their whole business structure has viewed technology as being an enabler of a silo yeah. or an enabler of a, of a traditional business process. How do you actually take that and start to go on a digital transformation journey. Yeah. And that's a question that my team and I spend a lot of time on with customers now is where do you begin? Yeah. And there's no one right answer. 
I sure. can't give you the 12 steps to digital transformation. Well, each business is different. Each business has That's different right. strengths in how they you know, store, procure, manage, and exactly. use their information. And I mean, it, clearly it's, it's something where you have to consult with each company and, and cr help create a solution that's perfect for them. Exactly. And what we're finding particularly interesting is that there's no profile of a company that naturally goes there faster than others. Yeah. I'm not talking about startups or companies that we call digital native companies, yeah. but older, larger institutions. And, you know, with business, legacy infrastructure with, and exactly, systems and, exactly. and you know, they might have an app or something that they made five years ago they haven't updated yet. That's exactly know, right. Some experiment. And, and you know, I, go, I go into a lot of our customers around the region, but you know, specific to the Australia and New Zealand market, mm -hmm. I am constantly amazed at which companies are so far ahead on this journey and which ones aren't. Uh, yeah. I was at a government agency in Canberra just a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. a large federal agency. The stuff that they are doing is years ahead of some of the big financial institutions that we work with. And I was stunned. Yeah. Because we wouldn't typically associate that level of risk and innovation and with speed. A, with the public and right. service. You and know, it was so yeah. impressive. And you know, they, they were keen to talk about their story, they're keen to meet other customers and other sectors that were doing things. And so to me it, it that's disruption in itself. Mm -hmm. it's, who's getting this vision, who's moving on it, and who's really struggling to understand what it even means. And for us, that's something that I, and I think we really have a huge role to play is just educating, enabling, helping customers go on their journey. And fortunately, we've done a great job of you know, consolidating our, our tool sets, our platforms over the last few years. Maturing it. Maturing it mm -hmm. and, and having a very strong, consistent story that's focused yeah. on helping customers go on the digital transformation journey. Sure. Are there any other customers or sectors in the region that you want to highlight that have really also, you know, beyond that government department that have really taken this on board and powering ahead? Well, that, that's kind of the point is I can't say there's an industry that's ahead of another industry. I'm finding pockets of roads. And, you know, we work in retail, we work in manufacturing, we work in banking financial services, we work in government. Yeah. And in every single one of those sectors, you're starting to see here's your emerging rock stars. Mm. Look at what these guys are doing compared to their competition. And see how you can yeah. adopt some of those ideas. Right. And, and you know, obviously we, we want to broker those ideas. We want to introduce customers to each other, enable them to share those ideas. We want to help every one of them, but they're all at very different stages of the journey. Are there any other aspects of the new development of the conference or just things that you're doing in the, the region that uh, you'd like other businesses that are watching this to, to know about and really take advantage of? I'd like, I'd like all businesses out there to stop and ask themselves the questions of, are we going to be relevant in five years? Yeah, and we see with Uber that you know you can you can be gone in five years. That's exactly. Right. No, I mean not that Uber's gone or the taxi industry's gone, but it's yeah. certainly it didn't. Dis I just re I read somewhere just recently it didn't just disrupt transportation. It disrupted the way it disrupted government. Right. Because they were so persistent in what they were doing, you know, and, and some would say breaking the law in terms of transportation rules that the government's changed their own rules to accommodate Uber. So I mean, it's just an incredible transformation mm -hmm. and disruption story. Look at Airbnb. Yeah. They're not just disrupting hospitality, they're disrupting real estate. Yeah. You know, people not just doing the classic investment property, but actually thinking, I want to run a business with a with an apartment mm -hmm. and, and building an Airbnb business. I mean, it, it's just, those things weren't even known how many years ago. Yeah. Five years ago, you and I wouldn't have been really talking about Well, it would have been products. the iPhone 3 or something, right. 3G, exactly. with, the, with the App Store version exactly. 1 and the, the most primitive of, of apps. And yet, and, and clearly today, with the sort of apps that uh, CA Technologies can help companies to build, I mean, we have a far richer platform of sensors and, and APIs and, and this maturity that, you know, people probably don't even realize what they can do. Yeah. And you must really be opening some eyes up to oh, the possibilities. We are. I mean, and, and when you actually start to break the journey down into some meaningful points, i.e., how do we move to agile methodologies? How do we move to agile and scale? Yeah. How do we start to take a portfolio approach to all of the business initiatives we have? How do you take an idea from an idea to cash? Yeah. You know, how do you move that through the system? How, how do you automate that so that it just flows seamlessly and you can get a consistent result every time? How do I secure it? Mm. Which when, is I, when I move at speed, yeah. how do I produce a quality app that's going to work every time, but is secure, especially handling my customers' data? And I remember during the keynote, I mean, talking about Agile and DevOps and how, how speed at, at which things are happening. Tom Tom was talking about the 12 monthly cycle. Now they're talking about you know weeks, yeah. you know, a couple of months to put get, get the feedback from what they've done with the last update from Amazon, yeah. and 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 you know rapid fire customer improvements that yeah. are demanded by customers and, and being delivered. And yeah. that's something that, that wasn't possible before right. either. 
You heard the uh, General Electric case study up here in, yeah. in North America, a you know, massive global company. Mm -hmm. 1,000 releases a month, moving to 5,000 releases a month. Yeah. I mean, the scale of that growth is, is hard to comprehend, but there's ways to do that now. We have the technology, we have the processes, we, we have the knowledge and IP around how you can shift your organization there and do it fast. Not, not take on a five-year approach to transformation, take on a six-month approach to getting some quick wins inside your organization. That, that's a shift of mindset too. Sure, sure. Now, a lot of what we're talking about is the future for companies yeah. that they'll be doing over the next you know, a few months, year or two, I guess. Yeah. I mean, but do you have any crystal ball thoughts on the next, you know, five or ten years? I mean, I, I know. I, I guess if you, you knew you'd be on a beach in Bahamas, <laughs> in, in the Bahamas with a pina colada that's and lots right, of money. That's but, right. I own a couple of unicorns. Yeah, right? that's yeah. it. But, but any sort of just general thoughts on where we might be in ten years' time? Like you know, if we, we spoke, we were talking about this in the year two thousand, and here we are in twenty sixteen, and it's now yeah. sort of happening. Yeah. What else do you might think? Look, I mean, I, I can look at it from a socio political level and, and just see how the world is just becoming this incredible homogeneity. Yeah. You know, we, we are moving so fast to putting everything we can into the cloud. We're putting so much information about ourselves into the cloud. Yeah. We're creating driverless cars. We're creating a generation of probably my children's generation who won't necessarily have to think about driving yeah. I a mean, car. I mean, uh, uh, one probably example yeah. is how we talk about AI today, but yeah. in 10 years, AI really will be AI, you know? And, and look that, at that, what it's doing now. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you look at what IBM did when they created Watson, mm -hmm. they won the Jeopardy game, and you know, got, a, got a whole bunch of pressed around it at the time, but the applications that are now being developed on that by the open community. Yeah. I was reading recently about a symphony that was written by a piece of software, yeah. played to an audience in London, got great responses from people. Software wrote a symphony. Yeah. So AI is starting to move into learning, learning algorithms, being able to create, being able to think in a way. And that can be terrifying. It's, it's, it's almost like, you know, Terminator is suddenly becoming a real that's thing. It. Well, we need to program in the, the kill switch and Asimov's that, three exactly, laws of robotics. That's exactly right. <laughs> but, you know, rather than focusing on Skynet going live, perhaps we're, we're starting to think about where can humans now begin to put all of their creative energy? Where do we now add value as we begin to automate more? We begin to just change the way we live and work and play. When we were kids, yeah. that would have been a 20 year horizon for those kind of big step changes. Mm. For our children's generation, it's a two-year horizon, yeah. a one-year horizon for changes that we're struggling to keep up with. Yeah, time is compressing so fast. It is, exactly, yeah. exactly. And if you're a company right now, you can't sit back and go with your traditional business models and think you're going to make your 10 points, 15 points, or 3% yeah. growth a year. I mean, that, that it's like a, almost like a business cliche now, but, yeah. uh, or just a life cliche, but you know, it's the, the thinking that got you here isn't the thinking that's going to get you exactly. there. Yeah. Exactly. You've got to change your thinking. Right. <laughs> you, you, you've heard us talk a lot about this week. You know, there was, there's that concept of built to last. Yeah. A great book called Built to Last. We, yeah. all, we all read it. Now it's about built to change. Yes. How can you be an organization that is adaptive and can change? And rather than coming at a protect and risk averse and keep things working more efficiently, which is really a lot of the models that we've grown up mm. with in business, how do we become speed, quality, innovation, risk taking, change? The business we are today versus the business we are 10 years could look completely different. How do we stay relevant? Yeah. Software is at the heart of that. And, and CA yeah. Technologies has been using its own software to undergo this have. process itself. We have. You know? We've gone on a massive transformation and I compare where we're at today versus the company I joined five years ago. It already is night and day. Yeah. Um, it's what keeps so many of us here and energized is you, you feel like you're, you, you've joined one of those companies that's on the cusp of doing something incredible. Yeah. And I know it sounds cliche, but we can change the world. Mm. And we're starting to. And, and then hopefully you've seen that energy just being around us here. This, this Absolutely. Week. I mean, there were some great uh, demonstrations before of some of the technologies on the show floor. And, and uh, you know, just some of those companies that are like incubators, like the Waffle I.O. that we saw yes. in the, yeah. in, the uh, in the keynote yeah. presentation. And, you know, just the speed. I mean, even things like uh, com mainframe conversion so that, you know, people can take the, those assets and, and convert from one... From, the previous platform to CIS platform and do it in a sort of a seamless yeah. way that doesn't require rooms of people but it's, yeah. it's sort of all automated and I mean people should watch that, that clip I'll have it uh, oh, in one of the stories on, on the site yeah. so look as we get to the end of the interview yeah. I always like to ask if you could uh, please share what has been the what you think is one of the best or the best piece of advice that you've ever received to help you get where you are today which I, I got that question from Ashton <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh, I didn't meet him personally, but and he was at a, a Lenovo event and he was talking about that. Did he share his answer? 
He, he did, and, and people have asked me that and I've forgotten, but, I, <laughs> but the event is uh, fully recorded, and, and I would uh, advise you to Brilliant. type in ITY Lenovo Ashton Kutcher, and you can watch yeah. the video of him talking all yeah. about it and giving his answer. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up. Honestly, the, the best piece of advice I've got would be a management piece of advice, which mm -hmm. is an executive mentor of mine several years ago, who said, don't feel you need to be the smartest person. And, and I think in our industry, it's so easy as you move into executive roles for that sense of, I'm here because I'm smarter, I've got more energy, I've got more motivation, I'm gonna dominate a meeting, and it's a very easy trap to fall into for yeah. a lot of personalities that go into this. I mean, work. you wanna hear from other people too. Right, and if, and if you can take that view and almost go with the Columbo approach, yeah. right, which is the, you know, I, I can dumb myself down because if I do, I'll actually open myself up to listen and learn. Yeah. Is so powerful for connecting, especially with this next generation coming into the workforce. They think digitally. They are so smart. They have so many ideas. If we try and push them into our management paradigms that we've learned over 20 years and now we think we've earned the right to be the, the right person, mm. we're just limiting ourselves. Yeah. And you know that, that advice is always stuck in the back of my head. I'd love to say I get it right all the time. I don't. Um, but it'll be a lifetime journey of just trying to open up everyone else around you and recognize that if you can if you can open people up you can give their ideas room space to move everything everyone's going to move things can blossom you know, exactly yeah. so what would your final message or messages be for IT wire viewers and readers and for future CA technology uh, current and future customers sure well, you know I've, I've spent my whole career in IT yeah I, I started in IT working on lands um, installing desktops, mm -hmm. uh, like like so many of us, and uh, moved up through IT into management ranks, and then so I still have such a soft spot for for IT teams, GIS teams, and MIS teams. I put a challenge out there to us now. We have to think differently. We have a choice right now as IT groups. We either get ahead of this thing, mm -hmm. and we become so relevant, and we light, lead the charge in our organisations. Mm -hmm. Or we do nothing and protect our patch and complain about shadow IT or rogue IT, yeah. which is just springing up everywhere in enterprises. As, as people try and create the changes they want to see, but as you say, rather than letting that be sort of an externally haphazardly done thing, it needs yeah. to be something that's coordinated and you know exactly. evolving, evolving from within rather than exactly. from without. So become champions of the organic growth. Yeah. Find ways to champion change through your organisation. Don't feel you have to control it. Yeah. And I think in IT shops, we've been built to control. Yeah, and standard operating are, environments. Right. Yeah. And you've got to balance it because you've still got your day-to-day -day operations you mm -hmm. have to maintain and all your SLAs. But find ways to become champions within your organization for digital transformation, for diversity of thinking, for embracing new technologies. Don't be afraid of it. And I, I think the future could be really bright for a lot of IT people. Well, Mark Bennett, VP Services of uh, Asia Pacific and Japan for CA Technologies, thank you very much for your time and best of luck for the future. Thank you, Alex. It was a real pleasure. Thank you.